Okay, so this is the R58 Mini from Mikatronics, and it is a superbly powerful single board computer. It works up to 8K video resolution, which I showed in my previous video. I really, really like it. I really like the other one they sent me. The Rockchip RK3588 is incredibly powerful. So the R58 Mini is quite industrial looking. So it's a very solid metal case. Uh, it's got these wall mount bits here or desk mount bits and it also has a couple of Wi-Fi antennas as well uh, but they've released a different version and this version it's actually the same board inside and you can see that everything lines up here uh, but this is plastic and it's designed I think a bit more like a media center or more for home use It's designed to be a slightly cheaper option still got loads of connectivity so we've got the HDMI in which allows you to record a video signal which I've shown in a previous Mikatronics video. Uh, obviously this is power, two HDMI outs, uh, Ethernet connection. We also have USB 3, a couple of USB 2s and a USB-C socket and a power socket. And on this side we've also got DisplayPort as well. But the really cool thing about this one which has been added, so it comes with, uh, well the particular one I've been sent is 8 gig of RAM 64 gig EMMC. Now there's rubber feet in here, I've taken the rubber feet out and, uh, and a couple of screws as well. And the base is removable and has a SATA connection for a two and a half inch SATA drive. So if I pop this drive in, you can see that I can slot it in and it drops into place and then you can put the base back on. Uh, but it's also got these handy little cutouts if you need to take the drive out again. Lovely and flush. And SATA drives, uh, SSD drives especially, really quite inexpensive for nice levels of storage. So we can use that as extra storage or we can run the OS off it. So let's pop that back on and pop the two screws back in and then all the rubber feet. And they're not stuck in, they just place in. Um, but they're quite thick and chunky so they, they do stay where they are. But before I uh, start this up and work out how to get stuff onto an SSD, uh, I wanted to show this because I, I was doing another video for this and I never got around to it, but I put loads of video content on there because I wanted to see what it was like as a streaming box. So you can see I've installed a load of services on here. Uh, Freeview Play is a UK service but it is like a live TV service so you can see here you get a guide you can see what's on at the moment so if I wanted to watch For Love or Money uh, I could click on that and it would actually launch in iPlayer. You can see it's already switched over to iPlayer and shows me live TV. Now I can't show much of anything um, but also if I go back I'm just pressing the right mouse button but I could do that on the uh, the air remote that comes with this device uh, but if I wanted to pick say for instance something on ITV so this morning is on which is this one and just hit play uh, it gives you access to live TV but you've got all the catch-up services as well but I was really pleased at how well this worked so if I do watch live TV uh, you can see it's uh, showing the program live as it is. Again, I'm not going to keep showing it. But it does that over all of the services. So I've tried it on Channel 5, tried it on Channel 4 as well. It does come up with a, a message on Channel 4 saying about a rooted device. Uh, we do not support rooted devices, but it works absolutely fine. Uh, so if I click on this, uh, you'll see that it will launch full screen. Uh, again, I'm not going to keep it playing. So let's go back out of that. And if I click on the On Demand button at the bottom here, uh, we have one of the best features of Freeview Play. I don't know if you have this in other countries where it's the same sort of thing. Uh, basically, these nothing is paid for on here. So if I click on movies, then that will show me all of the movies that are available for me to stream for free uh, through all the services in the UK. It's a really cool system, and uh, you can do exactly the same with sports as well. Uh, and it will show you all the matches that you can watch and things like that. Really, really great system. Anyway, that's Freeview Play. And the good thing about this is we don't need an aerial for our TV if we've got this sort of option because it is giving us something like a guide uh, which we can use and we can flick through the channels of the services that are supported. So let's have a look. Uh, let's play a bit of Netflix. Uh, and I'm doing this because some SBCs uh, do seem to lack support for major services. Uh, but I haven't had, I haven't struggled on this. Uh, so if we go for a bit of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. It's always safe to show that. Again, you can see it's playing straight away. Uh, you can see it's lovely and fast as well. So Amazon Prime Video. Uh, let's play a bit of the Grand Tour. And 
hit resume. It did say something about getting better quality in the settings. I couldn't see where it was. Anyway, I can't, can't keep playing that. Uh, Disney Plus doesn't work. Um, now, I don't know if it's the version of the app that I've got, but um, it wants to launch Hotstar and updates the latest version, and then it says it's incompatible. But loads of other things have installed and worked. So as a media center, especially if you're going to run something like Kodi on it uh, or anything like that, really, really good. So anyway, that was kind of what I wanted to show. I've also covered emulation in previous videos as well. So I was trying to get three monitors going, but unfortunately I haven't got a display port to HDMI cable, uh, or I have got one somewhere, but I'm not sure what direction it goes in. Uh, I did try USB-C. I have had one of these working with USB-C uh, with a USB-C monitor before, but Ubuntu doesn't seem to like it, and it's the same with Debian as well. It just doesn't recognize the third display. So I'm gonna play around with two displays, but let's show you a little bit of Ubuntu first. So I was trying to get the operating system installed onto the SSD drive. Uh, I did contact Mikatronics because I got stuck, and it turns out the UEFI boot isn't there yet. But uh, let's just launch a few things and show how, how quick everything works. I have covered this in other videos, but it really does work well. You can just keep opening things up and it really doesn't struggle. Uh, all sorts of things open. Let's go for calc. What else have we got here? A few more on here. So, well, cheese is the camera, so that's probably not gonna do anything because I've got no camera connected to it. H top, and you can see that it's using very little RAM, nice and efficient, and you can flick between all of these. Uh, I can do hot UK deals, and do a search for that, and let's do, say, BBC Sport, and it just they just are really pleasant to use they are really really fast certainly run a desktop operating system really nicely and if we go to the Mechatronics website uh, they've definitely improved the website before when you wanted an operating system you had to email and they'd send you the operating system uh, now on the no not the product page on the support page uh, all of the docs are there so whether you've got the r58x or the r58 mini uh, just click on it and you've got all the operating systems there. So at the moment we've got some Android variations, Ubuntu, a couple of Debians, some firmware and the upgrade tool. So to install the operating system, uh, you need Windows. I showed it in one of my previous Mechatronics videos uh, and you can just write the image to the EMMC drive that's on there. But as I just mentioned, it will be installable onto an SSD in the future. I did get asked the other day uh, about the Rockchip 3588 processor, what the comparison is with the Vim 4 and also the Rock Pi 4. So if we put in the Rock Pi 4 processor, so it uses the RK3399. And if we compare it to the Rockchip RK3588, funny, when you go through the specs, you look through some of the frequencies and they don't seem like there's too much difference, although this is octa-core on this one uh, and is using faster RAM. When you go down to the speed test, these 3588s do fly. Look at it compared to the 3399. Uh, now, SPCs are at different prices, so this all has to be taken in context, but it's just interesting to see how much faster it is. And in this test, we have the Vim 4's processor, the Analogic A311D2, which I was super impressed with when I tried it. But the 3588 is definitely a lot more powerful. And uh, I would be happy enough in a Pi 5 if we had the performance from the Amlogic A311D2 uh, in a Pi 5 with the community support that that gets. I think that would be great. But I don't know if, if budgets could give us that sort of performance or if we need to aim a bit lower. But it does show how powerful this 3588 is. But if you can throw more money at it, then uh, the Apple M1 is the, the laptop that I have. Compared to the RK3588, when you have a look at the speed tests on those, the M1 is a phenomenal processor, but obviously all of this is at a price. So a good addition to the range. Uh, I love the way that you can put a SATA drive in there. Obviously it'll be a lot better when you can actually use that SATA drive for an operating system, but even for now, to use it for storage, I know a lot of people will be interested for a media center, you could put a very big drive in that. And uh, it is a, it's a silent machine as well, which is great. Performance, as I said before, is brilliant. So we can drag from one, oh, I haven't set the monitors up properly yet, but we can drag from one to another. You can see I've got loads of things open at the moment and, uh, and it, just, it just handles it. 
very very impressive okay so i hope all this helps thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe